it, got to go. There's Chain Reaction, Diana Ross. Justine with the news next, followed by Sarah Cox. We are back tomorrow with the Radio 2 Book Club. Good evening. BBC News at five o'clock. This is Justine Green. The Prime Minister Liz Truss is due to give her first speech to the nation. The government is planning to borrow more than £100 billion to freeze domestic energy bills. And the football team, they're in trouble for laughing at a journalist's question. Liz Truss is about to give her first speech as Prime Minister. In the last hour, she's returned to London from the Balmoral Estate in Aberdeenshire, where the Queen asked her to form a government, to meet dozens of MPs and supporters waiting outside Downing Street. But as she was about to address the country, the heavens opened. Q Edwards was there. I'm sure the mics are picking it up, but the rain is now hammering down on the umbrella, so those are the sound effects, if you're wondering what they are. Um, and as you can see, some protective action being taken for the uh, podium itself, because uh, once rain gets into those mics, well, who knows what'll happen. The last person to give a speech outside number 10 was Boris Johnson. Before he flew to Balmoral to tender his resignation this morning, he called for the Conservative Party to unite behind its new leader. But he also hinted at a possible return to government by comparing himself to a Roman statesman who was called out of retirement to lead again. Let me say that I am now like one of those booster rockets that has fulfilled its function and I will now be gently re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down invisibly in some remote and obscure corner of the Pacific. And like Cincinnatus, I am returning to my plough. The BBC understands that the government is planning to borrow more than £100 billion in order to fund a freeze on energy bills for individuals and to provide support for businesses. From next month, a typical annual household gas and electricity bill is due to rise from just under £2,000 to more than 3500 The money to cover the domestic freeze will come in the form of government-backed loans for energy firms. Details on the exact support for businesses will be set out later this week. Sean Hughes, who runs a pub in St Albans, says help can't come soon enough. Our gas is going up 930% from 2.6 pence to 27 pence a unit, and our electricity is going up 400%. In real terms, it means that it's going up £100,000 for the next year. It's not affordable. And that's why we've got to see some action from the government this week. And hopefully a freeze in current rates is probably the only thing that's going to actually help. Scotland's First Minister has announced her plan to tackle the rising cost of living. Nicola Sturgeon told MSPs rents and rail fares would be frozen. Our Scotland editor James Cook reports from Hollywood. Nicola Sturgeon described the cost of living crisis as a humanitarian emergency which threatened lives. Her government's powers were limited, she said, and its budget under severe pressure because of inflation. She urged the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, to act on energy prices immediately. And the First Minister pledged to increase some benefits, freeze fares on nationalised Scotrail trains and freeze rents in both the public and private sectors. The Scottish Association of Landlords said that was a political attack which would cut the supply of housing, causing even more hardship. It's emerged that a man shot dead by police in South London last night was a 23-year-old rapper. Chris Carber, also known as Maddox, died at the scene in Streatham Hill. Police had just rammed a vehicle that had been involved in a car chase. Chris Carber had been affiliated to the drill rap group 6-7, which was nominated for a Mobo Music Award in 2016. The French football team Paris Saint-Germain have become embroiled in a row about the environment after the team took a private jet to their most recent league match. The country's sports minister has urged PSG to be more responsible. Hugh Schofield takes up the story. 
At a news conference, a journalist asked the question, given that the city of Nantes, where PSG played on Friday, was only two hours from Paris by train, wouldn't it have been wiser to travel that way rather than by jet? Listening to the question, Kylian Mbappe could be seen creasing up with laughter. Head coach Christophe Galtier then made a joke in response, saying the club was in talks with its travel company to look at the possibilities of getting about by sand yacht. A torrent of criticism has now come down on the club for failing to take seriously the problem of global warming. This at the end of one of France's hottest summers on record. In the city, the 100 share index closed up 13 points at 7,300. And the weather tonight, most of the cloud will be confined to the far north of England and Scotland, where heavy rain is expected, clear spells elsewhere, but further showers edging into southern areas, and overnight lows of 15 Celsius in London, 14 in Cardiff and Belfast, and 11 in Edinburgh. That's the BBC News. It's five past five. Justine, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Steve Bitterall, right on the radio. He's very good, is he? He's back tomorrow from two. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, welcome along to your charming Tuesday tea time extravaganza. Allow me to knock you up a delightful cocktail of radio attainment for you to slurp between now and 